something. I don't rem- I don't have any conscious recollection of that, but I uh, definitely have a. There's something see, almost like I'm you know, like a chip on my shoulder that I don't understand where it came from, but I or or some sort of complex. But I really like to do hard things, and I hate the colloquialism. Um, work smarter, not harder. I always prefer to do hard work. I mean, I, it well, what what it bo- it bothers me because it implies that hard work is stupid. Like if it if it's hard, it's dumb, and so you shouldn't do it because clearly there's a smarter way to do it so that it's easier. Just yes. Like it. yes. I just like. I truly believe that almost anything is just mental and I, you know, I have an aversion to like weakness, laziness, um, being irresponsible. Yes. That was my beautiful wife, Megan, who has a unique way of cutting through all the noise and getting straight to the main idea. We have all heard the phrase before, work smarter, not harder. And I know that at least I have found comfort in the idea that maybe there is a way to skip all of the hard work and the pain and discomfort typically required to reach our goals. But the reality is there are no shortcuts and Megan is right. Instead of trying to avoid the hard things, we should actually be seeking them out. If we avoid doing the things that are hard, we miss the opportunity for growth. Without the hard times, we don't learn how to push harder when we fail or how to get back up stronger when we don't see the results that we want. Doing hard things is where we learn to continue to pound away day after day with relentless consistency, heart, and passion. As my wife, Megan, beautifully and intentionally pointed out to me, it's the days when you must do the things that scare you, when you have to take a risk, when you have to push against the difficult challenges of life. Those are the days that make you stronger, faster, and better overall. For me, as I enter into this 10-week challenge, I am choosing to change my mindset. I am choosing to look at the toughest days as my best days because they are the days that have the potential to force the most adaptation, both physically as well as mentally. I'm choosing to seek out the hard work so that I have the opportunity for adaptation. My mantra for this 10 week sub two hour half marathon is going to be make it hard. I have officially signed up for the Atlanta half marathon um, Thanksgiving day. And I am officially making it known that I have a goal time of sub two hours. And uh, for a lot of people, sub two hours, probably not that impressive. Um, But for me, it's a time that I knew um, was potentially achievable, but only through Uh, a ton of hard work uh, consistently over the period of my training. Uh, And I think part of also what makes it sort of a challenging time for me, um, other than that I've not done a ton of consistent running in my lifetime, is that the course itself is pretty hilly. Uh, Although 
the course is also um, beautiful and in some ways nostalgic for me. It sort of starts in downtown Atlanta and goes through a bunch of the different neighborhoods, um, goes by the Braves old stadium, takes you through Piedmont Park. So in a lot of ways, it's sort of a, a tour around the area that I, uh, I grew up in and sort of have become familiar with over the course of my life here in Atlanta. So um, I picked a challenging course, uh, but I picked a course that I knew meant something to me and uh, couldn't think of a better place to try and uh, break sub two hours for the first time ever. So uh, getting ready to go out on my first training run, going to do about six miles today, um, likely much slower than race pace given that I haven't been running a lot and I'm just starting to get back into it. Uh, and I want to try and keep my heart rate low and do some, some low heart rate training as I start to get into this thing and you know, try to build my base with the limited time that I do have. So uh, with that, I think uh, you know, I've driven all this way, so I think it's time for me to do my first run. Definitely at that point in the run where my brain is telling my body that it's time to stop. And I have to keep reminding myself that this is why I'm doing this. That this feeling where it feels like you can't go anymore. This is why we started the run. This is why we signed up for the half marathon. This is why we set the goal of sub two hours just to get to this point so you can push through these walls. One thing I do like about running is uh, that you have a, a lot of time inside your own head. So you get a lot of time to think about things, um, which when life is super busy with kids and work and everything else, it's nice to be able to get inside your own head and sort of gain a clarity that you don't typically get to do in your normal day. And um, while I was on that run, I was thinking about how, you know, it's not really about doing the one hard thing, you know, signing up for the race and showing up on race day and running it. That is doing one hard thing. I've done that before, and it, it is there is a certain amount of satisfaction that comes with sort of going from couch to half marathon, or couch to marathon, but uh, not as satisfying as when you put in all of the hard work and the build up to the race, and then uh, you sort of get to uh, reap the rewards of all of the hard work that you put in and the build up. So for me, it's it's less about the actual half marathon itself and more about all of the hard work that's going to be done leading up to it. Alright, so the plan last night was to uh, come home after the run, um, put the kids to bed and uh, provide sort of my immediate thoughts uh, a reaction to first run and <clears throat> definitely came home and hit a wall. Uh, I haven't done that sort of extended uh, workout for that period of time in a long time. And typically uh, when I work out, I'm doing like a CrossFit workout or, you know, some sort of bodybuilding type thing, but not typically doing a ton of uh, endurance work for, you know, anything longer than three miles, something like that. So I definitely got home and crashed. And not only did I crash, but I ate the biggest dinner I've eaten uh, in a long time. And I typically do seconds, but there's something about doing that sort of prolonged cardio work that just makes me starving. And I know I'm not the only one that feels that way. Uh, I've heard that from other people before too. I think you're just burning so much energy that you come home and you're starving. And I used to joke with Megan that the reason I didn't uh, train for these long runs is because 
I felt like I just gained weight anyways because I would just come home and want to eat like six bowls of fettuccine alfredo or something just to get me to my baseline. But anyways, that's something that I'm going to have to figure out the deeper I get into this training. Um, so next day, definitely feeling uh, a sore, you know, my, my Achilles, my, my knees. So got to focus on recovery, maybe stretching, rolling out a little bit uh, the night or following uh, runs that way I feel good so I can get back out there and do more because I know you know getting miles on my legs is going to be really important definitely have some uh, sort of like didn't struggle so much with fatigue I wasn't holding very fast miles doing like 10 minute miles but still creeping above the 150 to 160 range in the heart rate so you know that would suggest that I need to slow down even more uh, to get into that zone two area um, but anyways um, so definitely feeling some of the pain today and you know, anxious to, to keep going and you know, build that base and get my legs underneath me so I can hit some some more intense training in the weeks to come I uh, also wanted to just sort of build on the point that I was trying to make after the run although I think I was a little bit uh, delirious um, right after and just say you know sort of clarify the point I was trying to make around doing a hard thing versus uh, making it hard. And uh, for me, I have run marathons. Uh, I have run half marathons. I have never trained for any of them, which I know sounds ridiculous. Um, and I think it is a feat in its own right to do that, to sort of, I think what I was saying is you know, to go from couch to marathon to sort of prove to yourself that you can do a hard thing is certainly cer certainly something uh, admirable to that and uh, worth celebrating but um, like I was trying to find my uh, medals that they hand out after the runs and I couldn't even find it downstairs because uh, it's in storage somewhere I think with the Christmas ornaments or something because I don't look at those with any sort of pride it's just sort of hey you did it that's cool but you're not as proud of it because you didn't earn it necessarily so I think uh, what I'm going for here is to put in a ton of hard work so that when I cross that finish line, I look at that medal, I look at the thing that we did um, and all of the hard work leading up to it that ultimately paid off or didn't pay off, but you get what you get based on what you earned in your training. And I'll look at that with a lot more pride, I think. So that's what I'm going for. I'm, uh, I'm going to make it hard so that when I cross that finish line, uh, I am proud of the work that I put in. So listen, I'm going to share videos over the next nine to 10 weeks on my journey towards, you know, working towards this sub two hour marathon. And uh, I'm going to be putting out tips and tricks and sharing my training plan and that whole thing. But, you know, don't expect any, you know, secret sauce on how to run fast or anything like that. I think it's going to be more about you know, sharing my journey as I lean into this hard thing. And if that inspires you to go do a hard thing, whether it's, you know, something with your family or in business or um, athletically, then that's awesome. And uh, so I guess, you know, you know, follow along if you can. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.